Welcome back. This PowerPoint is going to be about centroids. So we got to first talk about what is a centroid and then we can talk about the math of centroids. Centroid is also known as the center of gravity. It's usually labeled with this symbol. This is the center of where the mass is. You can think of it as if you could concentrate all the mass at that location, it would behave as the same as if it weren't all concentrated. So you can look here, if you got the center of mass located here, this is not going to move. But as soon as you push it, offset it, the center of mass is now going to fall down. So the equilibrium, or it's trying to stay at its constant, will not bounce out. And so it will fall down. So what we're going to use is we're going to talk about centroids and their location uh, for when we talk about for statics. Statics is when things don't move. Okay, so first off, we're going to look at a central location on the uh, the cross-sectional, or as if we're looking at it on the front view of a three-dimensional object. Now, we can think of centroid locations by either looking at simple geometries, or we can do complex geometries. We can look at triangles, squares, and circles. Now, we can look up and down for the location of that center, and we can see that in the up-down direction, left and right of a triangle here, is going to be the exact same. They're mirrors of each other. But up-down, notice how there's more material down here than up here. So you've got to find that happy middle where most of the material, this material on the bottom, has to equal the top material. Now triangles and circles, or sorry, squares and circles have a really nice easy geometry because it doesn't matter where that location is. And if you notice you have that nice line of symmetry here and it's located right in the middle, same with a circle is right in the middle. So now let's talk about the centroid locations for certain shapes. Squares, it's easy. It's half the length times half the height. So the centroid location x bar and y bar, the locations of those centroids, is just half the base times and then half the height. And you can just get that number. Triangles are a little bit harder. They are going to be, the base is going to be a third of the base while and a third of the height. So notice there's more material down here than up here. Then centroids for a half a circle, are, we're going to use some uh, pi functions, and they're located at four thirds, four radius over three pi. Now that's going to give you that number. So four over three, four thirds per pi, that's a number, times whatever radius it is. In this case, you take, and this is a radius of two, four times two, divide by three, divide by pi. And that gives you its location in the y-axis. Its x-axis will just be half the circle. It will be in the center. Now, to locate the centroids of complex shapes, we have to use these equations. These are look it's really ugly, but they're not as hard as they look. This E is called sigma. It means add up or sum. So the sum of the centroids of the, your individual shapes times the areas of those shapes all divided by the sum of the area of the shape. So let's look at this. What we're going to do is we're going to take this shape, which is a complex shape, and divide it up into simpler shapes. So we got now a rectangle, easy, square, really easy, and a triangle, again, easy. And then we're going to look at their locations of their stuff. So we're going to have a reference. We're going to say, where is 0, 0? We can say 0, 0 is down here or there, or in the middle. It doesn't matter. Now we just use our equations to calculate simple shapes. Areas, so squares, it's just the square, the size, it's rectangles, length times width times height, areas, circles, it's pi r squared, and then triangles, one half base times height. So we're going to get the areas of each shape. So we're going to take the base of this times its height, so 3 times 6, 18. Then we take the area of the second shape, our triangle, one half base three times its height. So that's going to give us 4.5. And then lastly, our three squared, which is nine. Those are just our A's in the equation. Now we got to find the locations of them. So this one 
is going to be located in the intersection of this. So half this, so 1.5 times its 3. And then we're going to do the same thing, location for our triangle. One third and one third height. And then lastly, half and half. So now that we have all these locations, we have to refer it back to the original. So this circle, we notice how it was measured from here to here. That's not what it is. It's not one-third of three, which is one. It's one inch from here plus this distance. Got to make sure you add it all the way up to the reference frames where we say zero, zero is. And then we do that with all our shapes. And then we just plot in our, our stuff. Area, 18. Its location in the X is 1.5. And it's location, and then you take the A times its X, so this times that. Do that for B, shape 2. It's, again, its area. It is X location, which is 4. Multiply 4 times 4.5, that gives you the 18. And again, 9 squared, the area of this, times its location in the X axis, that gives me 40.5. We do this again with the Y's doing the exact same thing, but this time we're just doing the y's. Now, we add them all up. That's what that sum is. Sum of the product of the area times that. We get 85.5. Sum of the y's, again, 85.5. Now, we're just going to take the sum of all the areas, add them all up. So what's the area of the whole shape? 31.5. Now, we take the sum of the product over its area, and it's 2.71. And then we do that in the y-axis. 85 over 31, and that's going to get me in the y-axis. And now we have our location. It's at 2.71 inches up, or 2.7 inches to the right, and 2.7 inches up. And that gives us our centroid of the irregularly shaped object. Notice there is a symmetry there. So another way we can do it is by using subtractive. So what we did was we did additive, where we added the shapes. Now what we can do is, if it's even easier, is you can do the negatives. So we're going to subtract it. We're going to take the area of the imaginary box and subtract the triangle. And we do the exact same thing, where we get all the area of the full shape, even this little white here. And we then remove this. But removing is a negative sign. So the area is a negative area. We're subtracting that area out. So the width, the height of the big box is 36 square inches, while the area is a negative 4.5. And then we just figure out, our, again, our centroids, get our locations relative to 0, 0, and then lastly, we put them into our equation. Notice how there's only two shapes now, so it's a little bit simpler. We plug them into our numbers. We do the math. We add them up. Again, noticing, making sure this is a negative sign because we're subtracting them out. And it's subtracting them. And you subtract the area out. And you divide them out, 85.5. And again, it gives us the sill, the same number, the 2.71 inches. Again, symmetry. So those are, again, our uh, equations, and you can do this even in the z-axis, but we won't deal with that. So we can even look at some of these as shapes. We can look at some common shapes, squares, L-brackets, C-channels, I-beams, hollow beams. They are just a whole, just with stuff missing. And we can change the look of the C-channels in the various different ways. We can look at the shapes, break them up into different shapes. Now we're going to end with looking at that cross-sectional area and what happens if we start pushing on it. It's going to start bending. You're going to start getting tension and compression, and that's where we'll end today. Thank you, and have a great day.